I believe every day you wake up, you look at your hands and your fingers and you thank God that you have them and everything else you have. And the other thing I constantly remind myself of is the fact that two little seeds connect it with, within a human being and in nine months, a perfect little human being was born. In nine months, your brain is formed and you become this human being. Now, if that doesn't tell you that everything works so exactly the way it's supposed to work, then nothing will ever make you believe that it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. My parents, they were just unbelievable. And I know everybody's parents are unbelievable, but my mom and dad, they taught us to love everything. They taught us that every, the more you love in life, the more you get. And I have put that onto my children and my grandchildren. And part of that came from having the grocery store and having to eat what it was we needed to eat because it was time to eat that. You can't sell it, but it's still okay to eat. So that's what we're eating tonight. And that's what we got. So we, we all, all of us learned to love everything at our table. And then that just related to life in, in general, right? He's not afraid to get dirty, eh? How old is he? He just turned one. Cambridge. It's not even Cambridge anymore. It's like, it was Preston. I was brought up in Preston, and as a child, we were never at home. We ran around, behind Riverside Park, where the 401 is, was our playground. Hills trees we built we built little log cabins out there we had fires up there we were never home we burnt we bur we started a fire one day that took three fire trucks to put out today if a kid, if you were a kid like me today they would they would have you on riddling or something right they would ha they would have you going to a little home or something to see what's wrong with you so I, i'm happy that we we grew up when we did Program. That's what it means to, for kids today. They're programmed. They're no free spirits. They grow up in fear. There's always, you know, be careful who you talk to and all of those things. And I don't think that the times were any different then and now, but we didn't have that fear. Oh, I'm still a street urchin. I still live on the street. Uh, you know, I lived in my van the last 40 years. Uh, I like being a street urchin. I was a street urchin when I was little. I spent many, many, many a day sitting on the street from seven o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Many, many days, months at a time. And then of course, sleeping in my van. Living in the van, uh, man, I've had, I, I really have had 20 homes at any given time that I could plunk my body and stay forever as long as I wanted, you know. But I've always tried to make myself a little bit useful with the people that have been generous to me. I can't imagine that I would have lived my life and not done what I've done in the last 32 years. And through that, through that, you know, being in a number of other businesses, the fruit business, the book and record business, and the fruit business was a huge business, but never made any money at it. And because it went out of business, that's how that this happened. This is how the art thing happened. My brother these days calls me a professional sleeper. You know, you use the word I, 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 but it's not. It's, 
it's magic. You want to call it magic? I call it a gift I've been given. I've done 800 drawings. I still don't know how to draw. And when I do draw, the mess I make of whatever I'm drawing and the mistakes I make in that drawing. Appreciate it. to freshen it up some more. Thanks. Did I even tell you you're beautiful today? Oh, thanks, Joe. All right. When I do my uh, paintings, I, I see my paintings a year before I paint them. I see them vividly and then have to figure out what size that they should be. And uh, they, they, just, they just come into my mind. It's actually, it's a bit annoying at times because they don't leave my mind a lot of times for long times. And it's called, uh, whenever God shines his light, my paintings are called high realism spirit which uh, the art world calls abstract, but they're not abstract at all. They're, uh, they're definite paintings with definite colors on, in definite spots on the canvas and a color balance and a flow to them and the movement of them. There's five or six movements. So they're definite. It's one of my favorites. These are a bunch of uh, women I met this this was in Amsterdam, I'm pretty, yeah, Amsterdam. This for this lady that owns this here. And the drawings, I, I call the drawings abstract because they are an abstraction of what they really are, the buildings of what they really are. And I believe all of that desire comes from the same place that a musical piece comes from for a person that creates music. The notes just come to them. The progression of the notes come through them. And I believe the art comes through you as well. And it's not about doing it for uh, fame or money or any other reason other than it's coming through you and you like to do it. There's a few things I love telling kids. I always point at what it, what it is and I say, the first thing you have to know about drawing that is you can't draw it. And then I point to a tree and I say, see how many leaves are on that tree? You cannot possibly draw every one of them leaves in their position on that tree. Get over it. And draw because you love to draw and once you've drawn a hundred of anything, you will get better at it. You, you will have your own style. I tell kids not to take lessons either. When someone tells you this is how you watercolor, that completely ceases to be art at that point. Because you're on a, now you're not on art is creative. And if it's exactly what it is, how you're supposed to do it, that stops it from being art because it stops being creative. It's just a, a mechanical motion that you're going through. But I also tell them the, the best thing about being, liking to do art and enjoying it is when you get to be 70 and 75 and, and you're still loving it and you've got something to do every day. Every day you get up, you've got a project that you're working on. I don't like money. My grandson, my 10-year-old grandson and I, he, he's been razzing me now for about six months because I told him that money has no value. And he, he won't leave, let up on it. He just picks on me all the time. But the only reason money has value is because some other fool will take it for payment. But if there's, no, there's no value in it. You know, it's not an apple that you can eat. It's not a blanket that you can keep yourself warm. It's not a home where you can live. They, pay, they paid me something like $2,500 to sit there for a, a Saturday afternoon. I've just never ever been able to make any money. But somehow I, I always have things looked after for me. I, 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 believe, it's, I, I believe that my, my fortune is the human beings that I've been involved in in my life. I, I'm so fortunate that I've got, that I've had children and grandchildren and now great-grandchildren and uh, lifelong friends. 
You can't buy that. I think the world is the way it is because that's what it needs to do at this point of, of time. You know, people think that they need to go out and uh, save people. You know, they, they work for Jesus, and, uh, but there's no saving to be done. It's only you thinking that you're saving. And I believe that any kind of wisdom that you impart on anybody is totally for yourself. Usually people that squawk about how much wisdom they have and all this and that, is because they're insecure and they're talking for themselves. I think our ego is so huge that we think that we're actually running the world. Your art is absolutely stunning. Thanks. Stunning. It's so nice. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm gifted. Everything came out of the earth. Everything you look at, everything you touch, all of us came out of the earth. We came from from the seed, from the food that was eaten, that produced the seed that was in your mother and your father. And it, you grew into this one person by being fed out of the earth, by drinking from the earth. And glass, metal, everything that is came out of the earth, which came out of the universe. So it's all one. So it, it doesn't end, it, it continues. But again, I think it's our, I, I think it's our ego that we want to keep everything. We, we want to hold on to everything. You know, it's mine. That's my dad. That's my mom. You know, and, and even after someone leaves and we can't do nothing about it, we still want them back. So loss is the hardest thing. Loss of uh, my marriage, loss of my father and my mother. I draw birds in my drawings that they're touching me. I don't put a bird in my drawing unless it's one of those people that have passed away that, that come down and touch me. Before we go, I have to tell you this one thing that I just read on my Facebook. I don't know whether you've seen this or not, but they're telling us now that smoking is good for the environment. Yeah. You know the reason for that? Because it kills people. <laughs>